Blacksburg, home of the 380th Air Refueling Wing, is located on the northwestern shore of Lake Champlain. Just 60 miles south of Montreal, 300 miles north of New York City, and a brief ferry ride from Vermont, Plattsburgh is the largest and fastest growing community in Upper New York State. Across the blue waters of Lake Champlain is the city of Burlington, with its unique outdoor shops and cafes. The sprawling six million acre Adirondack Park lies southwest of Plattsburgh. It includes White Face Mountain, Lake Placid, home of the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympics, the U.S. Olympic Training Center, 70 and 90 meter ski jumps, and North America's first refrigerated bobsled and luge run. The thriving community of Plattsburgh offers much to its 34,000 residents and visitors to the area. The population swells each fall as students arrive to attend Plattsburgh's two colleges the State University of New York at Plattsburgh and Clinton Community College. Autumn also heralds the harvest of one of the North Country's largest and tastiest crops, apple. Throughout the year, many outdoor-minded people come to the Adirondacks to fish, hike, boat, and ski. All this, combined with the area's rich military history and tradition, make Plattsburgh Air Force Base truly the best of the best. The strategic importance of our area was recognized long before Europeans set foot upon North American shores. The five Iroquois nations used Lake Champlain as a watery warpath, connecting them with their enemies to the north. After the Europeans arrived, new alliances were formed on the Lake Champlain warpath. The French joined with tribes in the north as British troops joined with Indians in the south. The opposing forces waged a series of bloody battles for mastery of our continent. Leaders on both sides knew that control of Lake Champlain was the key to victory. Control of the lake played a key role during the Revolution. In 1776, Benedict Arnold commanded the American fleet in one of the most important naval engagements in American history, the Battle of Valcour. Although outnumbered, the American fleet held off the British, and with winter fast approaching, the British fleet was forced to abandon its campaign and return to Canada, giving the Americans desperately needed time to strengthen their forces. In 1812, as part of England's final attempt to gain control of our young country, British ships once again mated the blue waters of Lake Champlain. To halt the British Army's advance, the Americans dismantled the bridges across the Saranac River and hastily built forts Scott, Brown, and Moreau. Meanwhile, in Plattsburgh Bay, 14 American ships under the command of Commodore Thomas McDonough awaited the British fleet. McDonough's steady resolve and superior tactics won the day for the Americans. Witnessing the destruction of their naval support, the British Army beat a hasty retreat to Canada. After the War of 1812, the Army bought the land on which Fort Scott, Brown, and Moreau were located, and the site became known as Plattsburgh Barracks. During this time, soldiers assigned here improved post facilities and built roads and fortifications in the surrounding area. In 1838, these men constructed the oldest building still standing on Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Among those who lived in the old stone barracks was Ulysses Grant, then a young lieutenant and a future president. In 1971, this building was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. During the Civil War, the post became the rendezvous point for northern New York as troops and volunteers answered the Union's call to arms. In 1891, Congress authorized expansion of the post, bringing the total land area to 700 acres. During the next few years, many construction projects took place at Plattsburgh Barracks. In 1893, the post headquarters building was built. The facility later served as a hospital administration building, and today it houses the support group headquarters. In the same year, the post guardhouse was completed next to what was then the main gate. 
this period, officer housing was built along U.S. Oval. Senior officers continued to live in these houses. In 1989, the U.S. Oval and the majority of its buildings were placed on the U.S. Registry of Historic Places. The 380th Air Refueling Wing Commander lives in one of these historically registered buildings. In 1895, the Post Hospital was built. The picturesque porches that once surrounded the wards are now covered with brick, as the building is now used as a military personnel flight. In 1897, the gazebo was constructed on the oval near the ice skating rink that's still popular with base children today. In 1898, as the 21st Infantry Regiment saw action in Cuba during the Spanish-American War, Plattsburgh troops were once again called to combat. After this war, the emergence of the United States as a world power prompted many national leaders to realize the need for military preparedness. This concern resulted in a series of months-long military training camps for young businessmen. These camps, known as the Plattsburgh Idea, were developed in 1917 by Major General Leonard P. Wood to serve as a source of supply for officers. The Plattsburgh Idea inspired the development of the Reserve Officer Training Corps to provide experienced officers for World War I. The ROTC camps were held annually at Plattsburgh until 1939. From the 1950s until just a few years ago, future Air Force officers were trained at Plattsburgh during summer ROTC and camp. Between the World Wars, our post chapel was built and dedicated by the Church Women's League for Patriotic Service. Constructed in 1933, the chapel is one of the most charming buildings on base and is still used today for services. During the summer months, it's highly popular for weddings. When the United States entered the Second World War, Plattsburgh's 26th Infantry Regiment departed to begin a long campaign through North Africa, Italy, and onto the beaches of Normandy. In 1944, Plattsburgh barracks changed hands when the Navy used the post as an officer training station. The post was renamed Camp McDonough to honor the hero of the War of 1812. In 1945, the Army regained control of Plattsburgh barracks and used it as an Army Air Corps convalescent hospital. After the war, the barracks was declared surplus, and its many years of service as a military installation came to a temporary close. The site then became known as Champlain College, the first college in the nation established specifically for servicemen returning from World War II. The college remained open until 1953, when the Strategic Air Command announced that a new bomber base would be constructed here. In 1954, ground was broken for the new base. During the next few years, an additional 3,600 acres were incorporated into the base. And on January 11, 1955, Plattsburgh Air Force Base became the home of the 380th Bombardment Wing. As the largest tactical unit in the Strategic Air Command, the wing traced its roots to 1942, when the 380th Bombardment Group was activated at Davis Mountain Field in Tucson, Arizona. At that time, the 380th was made up of a headquarters squadron and four B-24 bomb squadrons. After extensive combat training, the group moved to the Darwin area of Northern Australia. As the only B-24 unit attached to the Royal Australian Air Force, the 380th defended the lightly fortified Australian coastline against a threatened Japanese invasion. In 1955, while construction of Plattsburgh Air Force Base was well underway, the 380th was reactivated as a bomb wing and chosen to continue the military tradition in the North Country. After training in the B-47 Stratojet Bomber at Pine Castle Air Force Base, Florida, the 380th moved to its present home in 1956. Within the year, 
air refueling capability was added with the arrival of KC-97s to the 380th Air Refueling Squadron. By 1959, many construction projects were completed on the base. Among them the hospital, Cape Art Housing, Base Exchange, and Alert Facility. The following year, construction began on the first of 12 Atlas missile silos in the area surrounding Plattsburgh. In October 1962, in response to the Cuban Missile Crisis, Plattsburgh's missiles were rushed onto alert. By December, all missiles were operational. For its stirring response to the crisis, the 380th Bombardment Wing received the Air Force Outstanding Unit Award. In 1964, the KC-97s were replaced with KC-135 Stratotankers. By the following year, the Atlas missiles had become obsolete and were removed, and the silos surrounding Plattsburgh were closed. In 1965, the phase-out of the B-47 bombers at Plattsburgh Air Force Base took place. One B-47, the pride of the Adirondacks, was placed on permanent display at the base after flying to victory over all other B-47 units at the 1965 SAC Bombing and Navigation Competition. In June 1966, B-52 Stratofortresses arrived here, and the following year, the 310th Air Refueling Squadron joined the wing. During this time, tanker crews and aircraft from our wing supported operations in Southeast Asia. In 1971, the 380th received the Air Force's newest aircraft, the FB-111 Variable Sweep Wing Bomber. In July 1971, the first FB arrived at Plattsburgh and the crews began the immediate task of becoming combat ready. In 1972, the 4007th Combat Crew Training Squadron, later redesignated the 530th, joined the 528th and 529th Bomb Squadron. Plattsburgh's FB-111 never saw conflict, yet its versatility, high degree of accuracy under all weather conditions, and supersonic low-level capabilities quickly established the aircraft as SAC's premier bomber during the 70s and early 80s. SAC's annual bombing and navigation competitions were memorable events for the 380th Bombardment Wing. During the 1974 competition, the 380th became the first FB-111 unit to win the coveted Fairchild Trophy, awarded to the wing with the best overall combined bomber and tanker score. In 1975, the 380th Bombardment Wing again received the Air Force Outstanding Unit Award for consistently demonstrating outstanding combat readiness in both bombing and air refueling. In 1976, 77, 78, and again 1984, the wing captured the title as champion of the bombing and navigation competition, winning the Fairchild Trophy for an unprecedented fifth time, as well as its second Saunders Trophy. Also in 1984, the 380th earned distinction as the best wing in the Strategic Air Command by capturing the Omaha Trophy. Ultimate recognition, however, came in 1985, when the 380th received its third Air Force Outstanding Unit Award. Although a proven system, technology along with a reduced threat brought the FB-111 chapter to a close in 1991. To recognize its peacetime achievements, in December 1991, FB-111A Aircraft Number 286 was permanently put on display, next to the Pride of the Adirondacks in the base air park. In 1990, more than 500 Plattsburgh men and women deployed to Southwest Asia in support of Operation Desert Shield. When Desert Storm commenced in early 1991, Plattsburgh Stratotankers were instrumental in the incredible air campaign that helped bring the war to a quick and successful end. While most of our deployees were assigned to the 1703rd Provisional Refueling Wing, many others supported the mission elsewhere, all playing an extremely important role in the Coalition's victory. We salute our Desert Stormer, but we also recognize those who did not go. The families, the airmen, the officers who took up the slack, and also the Plattsburgh community who stood solidly behind their wing and Air Force. Together, these are the people who make this base and community the envy of our nation's armed forces. In July 1991, the wing bade farewell to its bomber mission and took on a new role with an old friend the KC-135 Strato Tank. The 380th Air Refueling Wing is the youngest in the Air Force, 
but it brings with it a record that is unmatched. The important mission of the KC-135 was further emphasized with the addition of the Tanker Task Force. Charged with the refueling of all East Coast transatlantic missions, the task force adds further credibility to Plattsburgh's strategic importance and is the only one of its kind in the Air Force today. The 380th Medical Group is another proud part of our story. Medical examinations, dental and general hospital care are provided to active duty and retired military members and their families. To meet tomorrow's challenges, new facilities have been built and roles changed. In 1990, a new vehicle maintenance facility was completed. In 1991, the old commissary was converted to an indoor mobility center. Today, troops and equipment can be totally processed completely out of the environment. Also in 1991, the 380th Airman Leadership School became an integral part of the Air Force's educational development program. At Plattsburgh Air Force Base, we are consistently trying to enhance our professional image and quality of life. Continuing base-wide improvement efforts included new paint schemes for most facilities and work center renovations through the Base Self-Help Program, an upgraded child development center, Adirondack Dining Hall, new physical fitness center with an indoor swimming pool, spacious commissary, renovated housing and dormitories add to the quality of life for base members and their families. The world is seeing many changes in the 90s, changes that reflect on the 380. The new concept, multiple group commanders, also was instituted in 1991. Today, the wing commander is supported by his vice commander, the operations, logistics, support and medical commanders, and a senior enlisted advisor. This streamlined organization is in step with the Air Force's change to a smaller but more efficient force. 1991 also saw the end of the Cold War, the demise of the Soviet Union, and the outbreak of democracy throughout the former Warsaw Pact. With the strategic threat of our former adversary diminished, President George Bush took the unprecedented step of drawing down Sachs nuclear forces, including the stand-down of all alert bombers and Minuteman II missiles. For more than 34 years, Plattsburgh's men and women stood guard, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, ready to respond to any crisis. Today, our alert ramp stands empty, a testimony to the end of the Cold War and a tribute to Sachs' vigilant alert forces. On June 1, 1992, the 380th became part of the new Air Mobility Command, which combines tanker and airlift assets to provide global reach for our nation's armed forces. In December 1992, this new concept of global mobility was tested by Operation Restore Hope, tasked with providing humanitarian aid to the starving nation of Somalia. AMC had to build and maintain a 10,000-mile air bridge to transport troops and supplies. The success of the operation was due in part to the men and women of the 380th, who provided the critical first air refueling link in the air bridge. In the winter months that followed, the wing flew 348 Restore Hope missions, never missing a single refueling. In July 1993, the 380th became part of the 21st Air Force. The wing maintains operational control of the 509th Air Refueling Squadron at Griffiths Air Force Base, New York, in unison with Plattsburgh's 310th and 380th Air Refueling Squadrons to provide global reach. As the 21st century approaches, the 380th stands to continue upholding Plattsburgh's long tradition of military excellence. The men and women of the wing have proven themselves in test after test of their preparedness. The Air Base Liaison Committee, chaired by Mr. Clyde A. Lewis, is an integral part of the 380th Air Refueling Wing. The committee's unwavering support, dedication, and friendship directly contributes to the success of our wing's mission. Air Force leaders recognize Mr. Lewis's contributions and support by presenting him with the highest Air Force honor bestowed upon a civilian, the Air Force Exceptional Service Award. He received the AMC Distinguished Citizen Award in August of 1993, when the base air park was dedicated and renamed the Clyde Lewis Air Park in his honor. The successes of the 380th cannot be claimed exclusively by the men and women in uniform. Team Plattsburgh is comprised of military, their families, civilian workers, and our outstanding neighbors of the North Country. 
More than 200 years of friendship exists between this, the nation's oldest combat-ready military installation, and the citizens of New York. Together, they make our home tops in New York. The 380th Air Refueling Wing is a distinguished unit, proud of its strong heritage and many accomplishments. Since the very inception of our nation, the men and women here have compiled an incomparable record that gives Plattsburgh a unique place in American military history. As in the past, the professional men and women of the 380th Air Refueling Wing in Plattsburgh Air Force Base stand ready and determined to carry on the honorable tradition of defending freedom. Always ready for global reach and global power.